This is a Clark University podcast. <laughs> I knew we were friends finally when we had our first fight, which was probably in 2017. <laughs> but it wasn't really a fight. It was more like, when is this film going to come out? And, and then, you know, that was a long time ago. So, you know, the end of the story, which is like in six years. Omar, what do you think? How's our friendship developed? <laughs> it's like when you marry, when you marry, if you have some up and down, be careful because the first controversial moment is going to be the end. <laughs> We continue the journey. I I need to say we're friends, man. We're friends. I'm in love with you. I love you too, man. <laughs> How did Soren Sorensen, a screen studies professor at Clark University, and Omar Sosa, a Cuban composer and pianist, form this close bond? It's a story that dates back ten years. In February 2013. A few years after Soren heard Omar's music for the first time, he had a proposal. Could he tag along and film as Omar toured with Paolo Frezu, a celebrated Italian trumpet player? A decade later, Soren has released a feature-length documentary titled Omar Sosa's 88 Well-Tuned Drums, chronicling the pianist's music and life. Let's rewind to when Soren first heard Omar's music, a versatile blend of jazz, Latin, African, and electronic elements. I was writing for a, a very small arts and culture publication based in Providence, Rhode Island, called Tribe. I was writing and editing and just kind of freelancing. And the editor-in-chief, Tony Aguilar, handed me a stack of CDs. You know, there's like some household names in there and, and people from all over the world. I mean, probably you know, from six continents, you know, all, all different kinds of people. And one of them was Omar Sosa. But it was this was like 2010 or 11 when I first heard it. You know, I never really listened to Latin music. I listened to a lot of jazz fusion. I went to Berklee College of Music. Um, there, there was definitely something in it that spoke to me. Once Omar and I got talking, I think the first time we, we spoke on Skype, we ended up talking for a really long time. And you experience kinship with people from, from different backgrounds, and it's, it's really special. And I think we had some stuff in common and some stuff that absolutely not in common. I, obviously, I grew up in Connecticut. He grew up in Cuba. Um, but we had similar kind of taste in music and similar curiosity about the world and about each other. What I remember is we went to a bar in New York City. I knew he was touring with Paolo Frezu in 2013, and I asked if, if we might film the concert and do some interviews with him and Paolo, and they said yes. That was February of 2013. So yeah, 10 years later, finally there's a film, and I always have to apologize to Omar because he works really fast and I work really slowly. <laughs> For the genre of documentary, it's it's just as important to have a good character as it is in a narrative. If he wasn't willing to talk or he was sort of not interested in going into his past at all or, or he was going to be cagey or protective of certain things, it wouldn't have made for a good film. But he was, you know, he's great and, and really generous with his time. I'm Melissa Hansen, a producer in Clark's communications office, and this is Challenge Change. What you just heard is what I consider the most stunning moment in Soren's documentary. Omar and Paolo are playing together, while Paolo engages in circular breathing, a technique that produces a continuous tone. The magic of that performance is palpable through the screen. You can sustain this note for 10 minutes, a minute, 15 minutes, this depend, is depend of how you practice this kind of circular breathing. Circular breathing comes from his Sardinia tradition. They have some instruments called launeta. It's, it's a great instrument, and the way they, they play is with a circular breathing. The only way they can play is with a circular breathing. So this is what one of the first times he did this, <laughs> the majestic moment of the concert. When he do this and he walk, was basically acoustic because he, he put out his microphone. And I need to say the sound come out really well. So because you don't you don't see the you don't hear the difference between when he got the, the microphone and when he put out the microphone. So there was emotional moment and it's not only you, of course, who, who are touching uh, for, by, by, by this moment. 
I had screened a portion of the film a while ago um, at Rhode Island College, and and that was the portion of the film that was that that entire performance. You, you really do need five minutes to sit with that, or else it doesn't have the same resonance. Paolo is playing one note, but he's playing it uninterrupted with his with his cheeks and his throat and his lungs and his abdomen and all this stuff and his diaphragm and his whole his whole body. Right. It's like this kind of unbelievable feat. Um, but then you also have Omar who's comping uh, and accompanying him and not really knowing where this is going and when it's going to end. And there's this kind of, you know, uh, communication without words um, that, that they do a lot of, which is what improvisation really is. It sounds like they've done it a million times, and and I can tell you because I've seen them several times. They haven't. They and just like Omar said, he doesn't do it every night. It's not like a circus act or something, right? And even if it was, it would be terrific. But it is. It was really a special moment in South Orange Performing Arts Center in New Jersey. That was that was February in February 2013. Yeah, I remember it well. Omar has released nearly 30 albums since the late 1990s. He's received four Grammy nominations and three Latin Grammy nominations. Something I call music from the earth and voices of the spirit. Music is music, but for something. We're talking about classical music. African music is not a classical music. When the people or some journalists or somebody say, well, you are a jazz musician, you know, I say, you know, I love jazz because the philosophy behind the jazz is freedom. And I... I I love to do what I like to do. And freedom is basically this. Freedom is you do what you like to do. I always say, you like a tone, have a form. The pop have a form. The R&B have a form. The, the jazz as a style of music have a form. Head, solo, head, solo. A great musician is a person who has the ability to, to play really good and and can cover some spectrum, some big spectrum of music. Artist is an artist. is a person who can create, can be sunny inside of every people's soul. A great artist facilitates other great artists to do what they do really well and Omar does that um, and you know to, to the best of his ability every night. There's a leadership quality. So he's a, he's a band leader. He truly embodies the sort of qualities about leadership across the board, which is this idea of facilitating other people and other artists to, to do what they do really well. When you're on a bandstand or you're in a club or you're in a theater and you've got a sextet, right? I mean, all of those people with him are, are composers. These aren't sidemen. He really is a leader, but he's he's up there with a bunch of other band leaders. He's got a big personality and, and he's a big character, but there also has to be a certain amount of humility for these other artists to do their soloing. He lets them sort of take the band in a direction they want to take it. Omar tells me that watching the documentary provided a different perspective on the spirituality of his performances. <laughs> It's something I got to see firsthand as Omar performed with the Suba Trio on Clark's campus Sunday night. It really was a truly spiritual experience. The trio, dressed in all white, played only after a lit candle was placed on Omar's piano. I could see Omar get completely lost in his performance dancing along as his fingers tapped the keys, locking eyes and grinning widely at the other two members of the trio. Omar's goal is that his audience walks away in a state of serenity. Peace, love, unity, and hope, and optimism. This is what the world needs. This is what we all need. We all need love. The Beatles say, <laughs> Long time ago, everybody said it. And we continue to repeat the same scene all and on. That means we don't there. <laughs> it's no reason to fight when it's a space for everybody. When it can be a food for every single human being in this planet. 
To learn more about screen studies at Clark, visit clarku.edu slash screen dash studies. Challenge Change is produced by Andrew Hart and Melissa Hansen for Clark University. Find other episodes wherever you listen to podcasts. One, two, three. Clark! <laughs>